Number four, number four on the best inventions list, shipping container. I know what you're thinking. How could you have shipping container above nuclear power? It's a bomb. How could a shipping container be more important? Well, stay tuned. I will make the case. Also, if you don't like it, make your own list, all right? Go to grad school, get a PhD, become a lowly adjunct professor. You can, you can make your own list, all right? This is my list. Number five, nuclear. Number four, shipping container. We all know what a shipping container is looks like this. And so why is it so important? Why am I putting it, it all the way up at number four? So trade, as we covered last lecture, critical to growth. And we saw just the massive expansion of trade in the 20th century. Part of this is the costs of trade went down significantly. And the reason there, there the main innovation to, uh, Lowering those shipping costs or making shipping easier is the shipping container, all right? And so we have to go back before uh, before the shipping container. What was going on was called break bulk shipping. Basically, you just take all the stuff you're trying to ship, shove it in a, shove, shove it in a, a, a cargo bay of a ship, boom, hits the port, and then you just got to unpack it. It's like, like when you move, you know? It's like you just shove everything in there. You got some boxes. You got some this. You got some that, you got some furniture, you all put it in there and then you undo it. Essentially, nothing had really changed since the ancient uh, Phoenicians, since like the early days of trade. Um, this, this, this technology or uh, this coordination issue had not really improved. And so we had two thirds of the time, uh, the ship is spent in port. So, you know, the ship only really makes money when it's moving around. So it's spending two thirds of its time in, pro in port just because it takes forever to unload these things and then load them back up. It's dangerous. Dock workers would die, you know, fairly frequently. Uh, essentially, you're packing all the stuff, it would fall over, um, and, you know, uh, that, that's not good. It's hard to track things. You know, if you're kind of this haphazard method of shipping, it's hard to track things. Things would often get lost, and so it was really, really high to ensure things as they traveled. And then also the dock workers would routinely, you know, take things, all right? So the famous quote, $20 a day and all the scotch you could carry uh, home. Enter this gentleman, gentleman, Malcolm McLean. He says, he's actually not even in the shipping industry. He's in the trucking industry. He's like, why don't we just make this all standardized? Why not just have a big box, you put everything in, and then you just take the box. The box goes straight from the ship onto the truck. You don't need to unload it. You don't need to unpack it. It just goes ship to truck, truck to train, or, 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 or ship to train. Don't need to unpack it. All the equipment is just set up to take the same shipping um, container. And so if you're thinking about the most important innovation in the transportation se sector, and we just saw last lecture, just the explosion of global trade. Well, really, it's this. It's the standardization of the shipping container. All right. And as I mentioned, you can go through multiple modes. The, 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 the ship minimizes the ship time in, uh, uh, in port. Insurance falls to one sixth of the previous price. So now... It's much easier to insure things. That makes it cheaper to ship. We got a 40-fold increase in longshoremen productivity. All right, what does that mean? That means the longshoremen, the dock workers, can unload something 40 times faster. This is classic innovation. Nothing is, um, you know, we haven't lost anything. We've just made these people 40 times more productive, all right? And so theoretically, we need 40 times less longshoremen. That's people that can go into other fields, specialize, whatever. We haven't lost anything. What we've gained is just time. We're doing the same thing, but we're doing it so much faster um, and so much cheaper. All right. Now, if you go to, if you, to, in today's macroeconomic models of shipping, they assume the shipping costs are zero uh, because it's so cheap to ship things uh, around the world, partly due to uh, containerization. So here I'm just showing you just how, you know, here's how it looks on the ship. Here's how it looks on the train. Here's how it looks on the truck. So, all right, that's how it works. Now, really, it's not like this is a, you know, it's not like you need to be Einstein to figure out a shipping container, right? And so really, Malcolm uh, McLean, what his genius was in is in getting everybody to adopt this, you know, essentially proof of concept, um, and then the ability to convince ports to um, turn over, to switch over to this containerization. And then finally, really, this is where it takes off, where he's able to convince the U.S. military, hey, adopt my shipping container for shipping you know, whatever you need to ship to Vietnam. And so it kind of creates this, um, this modern triangle trade where 
the shipping container goes to Vietnam carrying whatever, you know, the, the, the military needs. And then on the way back, it stops by various Asian countries, primarily Japan, to pick up goods uh, to come on, on, on the way back. And so there's really high fixed costs initially. So, you know, it takes a lot of work to reconnoiter your uh, port to, um, to, to, to use these containers. You got to get new cranes, all that. Uh, but once you do it, it's, it's much cheaper and much better. And you can, you can move a lot more cargo through your ports. And so, and this initial cost is borne by the shipping companies. They're essentially paying ports to redo these things. Um, and what, what was interesting about this is you see a lot of like fall and rise of various ports. The ports that adopted this became the dominant ports. The other ones fell. So San Francisco was the port of Northern California. After containerization, it's Oakland. Oakland adopts the... Um, adopts the uh, the new technology san francisco doesn't and that's 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 what happened there new york same thing the new york port goes down the new work the new work port uh increases in um in the uk london and liverpool lose uh their dominance and two other ports of uh um uh take their place all right so that's essentially um how we get it here's the timeline he develops the prototype the u.s adopts it certain certain ports it's put into the U.S.-Japan routes because of the Vietnam War, and then essentially everybody else uh, adopts it, and we are essentially have uh, the standardized method of shipping things that is much more productive than what came previously. Here is, this is not proving causality, but it's just showing you here's when the container was adopted, and we can see this massive ramp up of global trade facilitated by, not this is not the sole reason why, um, that trade expanded, but this is one of the reasons why the trade expanded is these shipping costs. And in the shipping container, we can see the representation of lots of the big trends of the 20th century. Globalization, all right? Um, and so we have you know, a much more integrated world than we had at the start of the 20th century, and the shipping container essentially was a part of that. Poverty reduction, part of that increase in uh, trade brought that uh, brought the development of many countries. So we have this massive fall in poverty in the 20th century that's associated with uh, globalization um, and trade. So as part of that, superstar cities. So what happens is all these regional ports decline, all right? You essentially don't need it anymore. You're shipping, you're shipping your stuff into the big port, and then it's very easy to ship it via rail or via truck after that. So your regional ports decline. And we're seeing this all over the place where there are certain cities in the US that are just exploding and other cities are languishing. And we see this also in, in certain industries where there's superstar firms or superstar individuals. And essentially because of the low transaction costs, it, you know, all over the place now, you know, you can think about the internet, how you could reach a massive audience, the shipping costs. How if you're like a dominant manufacturer, now the shipping costs are low, you know, I can reach essentially the whole world instead of my local market. And so what this is as we are the, the growth, this is, this is causing the growth of superstar cities, superstar individuals, superstar uh, 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 firms. So again, this is part of that, that trend. And then finally, as you know, throughout the 20th century and moving into this century as well, we are constantly uh, replacing labor with capital. Okay, what that means is we're constantly innovating, coming up with new machines, aut automating everything essentially. Um, and so we are losing essentially unskilled jobs. So we're, there's, a, uh, there's a decline in unskilled work throughout the 20th century and it's being re essentially replaced with machines. So here we have like the decline in the dock workers. They're being replaced by these uh, the shipping ca containers and like these, these, you know, these cranes that can easily move this stuff. Um, and that's just part of the 20th century. So all I'm, this is not a commentary on the trends, whether they're good or bad, but these are just some of the very, very broad trends of the 20th century. And the shipping container fits right in to all of them. So that's why... It's number four. All right, coming up next, the cities.